We have some software, and as you know, research software isn't always the nicest reading before you go to sleep, but it works, and it's worth presenting here. So the first toolkit that you should be aware of for doing OMR is the veritable Gamera monster. It's the first open source OMR library, and for a long time the only one. Uh, it's not just for OMR, as we have heard, there are people using this for ancient Greek documents, I think, nowadays. So this thing is still alive. Be very afraid. It it's basically the reference implementation of a lot of published OMR research. Essentially everything prior to 2010 is only in Gamera, if it's available at all. And uh, there, the, the older staff removal methods, basically everything pre-machine learning for staff removal is in the Music States Toolkit of Gamera. So if you are starting out, basically you have to get this to, to get a feeling for what has been done a long time ago, what are the difficult issues with these methods, etc. Et uh, it is built around this traditional OMR pipeline where you pre-process the image, segment it into symbols, classify the symbols. Uh, there, it, I think in, in its core it's C++ and it has a very nice Python interface. It has this GUI and extensive documentation, which is a really important property. It implements some image processing things which I haven't seen anywhere else, like this coarse transform where you try to find out what's the longest line that you can draw through a point without leaving the foreground, for instance. So this, it, it, there is really a lot of stuff in there. Then there is a suite of OMR tools uh, published at the DDMAL GitHub, which is the department of Professor Fujinaga. Surprise, surprise. Everything there is geared for web-based use. So there is the Rodan architecture, this, this huge bird, which is really in the cloud. The server has a REST API. There are, uh, there's the interface defined for Rodan workers. So if you want your methods to work as uh, to be callable from the Rodan infrastructure, you just implement the appropriate wrapper class. Uh, you can manage the database of images and the annotations that you have for them through Rodan as well. I mean, if you are thinking of doing OMR, then you probably want to, to publish your code also as part of something Rodan compatible, runnable from there. It doesn't make sense to duplicate this effort. Uh, it has the facility to manage interactive jobs, where you tell the, where the job isn't run something on the server in a batch. The job is to actually wait for a user to do something in some editing software, like the Pixel JS editor or the Musky Marker. These things we've seen before. Uh, there is already a bunch of pre-trained models for Rodan, specifically the layout analysis that we've seen uh, the demo for, this, this patch-wise thing. You can just download it from this GitHub. And finally, there is a bunch of tools for visualization and for this interactive editing. Again, everything is web-based. Uh, it's the OMR infrastructure for today. Then there is the Muskima suite, which is basically support for this uh, music notation graph format. Uh, the Muskima package is the API for this format and for manipulating it. Uh, you can do things there like infer MIDI from the notation graph once you have it. It implements this uh, some ways of inferring the graph and many other editing uh, functions which are made available to human users through the Musky Marker Editor. This is a Python app built on the Kiwi framework for graphical interfaces. Uh, you've seen that there is an object detection client implemented there. This could essentially or should 
and that's my fault. It's not done yet, but it should be uh, wrapped to become a Rodan job, for instance. The documentation for this one is not too great. I mean, it's solo work, basically. So. Then there is the Audivaris system. This is probably the oldest standalone OMR app that has been given available as open source. Gamera is for basically expert users who want control over the process. Audivaris is more for users who enjoy having a black box to play with. Uh, but since it's open source, you can also look inside the box. Nowadays, it used to be a standalone app with a user interface and everything. Nowadays, it's being refactored as an OMR engine for the MuseScore editor. And it's actually used from MuseScore. You, you can do this from, from a menu. It has a pretty neat model for recognition, which is worth knowing about. Uh, the low-level objects are modeled as glyphs. Those that connect other glyphs are modeled as filaments. So, for instance, beams would be filaments, or these long phrasing slurs are filaments. Uh, each glyph gets assigned some interpretation, or a bunch of possible interpretations, and based on the relations between these, for instance, uh, I mean, a, a ver the interpretation of a vertical line glyph as stem from a node versus a bar line cannot coexist. And there is this simple interpretation graph which is means to resolve these uh, possible interpretations and arrive with a recognition hy hypothesis. It's quite a neat piece of software. And of course then there is Arispix and I think we've already seen this video. This one is for the early typography. And there is a lot of manuscripts in this form. I'm not sure if you've had the honor of singing some Renaissance stuff, but there's thousands and thousands of pages in various archives which use this type. Then there are the commercial applications, which of course we don't want to talk about too much, but they are there, and for some purposes, like for the purposes of the Bavarian State Library, they can give you useful results. Again, in the demos you've seen that for some kind of scores they work, and if you don't want to do OMR and just want, it, want its results, then this can be a good solution for your use case as well. These kind of old guard applications have been around for a while, now they are integrated one into Finale and one into Sibelius. Uh, there are some, which, which we call new blood, uh, those focus mostly on online recognition, so writing on a tablet, Maybe you have seen the Staff Card promotional video, which looks really impressive, but, well. Uh, there is a bunch of mobile apps branching out of this, but these often fall into the trap of coming to the problem and saying, oh, it's so easy. So then it works only for a very limited subset of actual uses you could have for this. We don't really have any quantitative evaluation of these applications. <coughs> here, uh, the slides will be made available, so here is a shortcut to many of these tools that I've mentioned. And I was saying a short time ago that we don't have quantitative evaluation, and this is actually a much bigger problem than just saying whether we are better or worse than the commercial apps. If we ask how well is our OMR system doing, there is no authoritative answer. So for one, it really depends on what you want your system to do. We've had this palette of possible applications. We've had these two fundamental streams. Either you want to reprint the score itself or you want to recover the semantics behind that or you want to do both. Uh, so, broadly speaking, we can evaluate OMR intrinsically and extrinsically. Extrinsic evaluation means within an application context. So you don't care about the system in any other way, except does it help my task or not? For uh, transcribing scores, for digitizing scores, 
the appropriate extrinsic metric is how much time does it save when you have to check it and correct the errors versus how much time it would take to create this core manually from scratch. So this would be an extrinsic metric application defined. Intrinsic metrics are uh, more in the line of how well our system actually extracts the information encoded in the score. So the score encodes a finite amount of information. There's a finite amount of those visual objects. They encode a finite amount of nodes. These have those five attributes, of which only four are actually encoded by scores. So this is a bunch of checkboxes that your system should be ticking. And theoretically, we can say, OK, your system has ticked 92% of boxes of type notepad found, 80% uh, of checkboxes of pitch recovered correctly, etc., etc. So this, this kind of error counting has been attempted for OMR, most prominently by Bellini and his team in 2007. They just asked a bunch of people to mark the errors that OMR applications made. We just give them two pieces of paper and say, okay, this is a correct output, this is a recognition output, please count the errors. And there is a huge table that describes how to count these errors. And they did this on both the graphical level, where you say, did we find all the clefts? And on the semantic level, when they ask, did we recover, for instance, the durations of nodes properly? Uh, this is probably the most detailed attempt at evaluating OMR, and it has been 11 years. So while we can do this for the individual steps, like object detection, quite well, um, this is still an open problem. We don't have a script into which you could feed two music XML files and say how similar they are. We don't have this for pretty much any, uh, any of these representations in a way that is meaningful for evaluating OMR. Of course, you can use some kind of tree edit distance on the XML files, and it will give you a number. But this number doesn't actually correspond to how difficult it would be to change the recognition output to the new score. Because you run into all these things I was talking about, about how music XML is interleaving graphical and semantic information, how it's kind of inventing abstract objects that aren't actually on the page. So there is an object called voice, but this voice, which is an abstract musical thing, contains nodes for accidentals, for key signatures, which do not necessarily belong to any given voice. So we don't have a nice way of evaluating OMR, per se. One of the major blocking issues, and you, you know, you should take this as relatively good news, because this means another avenue in which to publish. Uh, the obvious thing that should be solved is the interaction between errors at the graphical and at the semantic level. So, the typical example you would use is that if you misclassify a clef, so if you say this is a bass clef and in reality it's a standard treble clef, then all of the pitches on that staff will be wrong. You've made one error on the lower level, and on the semantic level this manifests itself as like 30 errors. <laughs> And moreover, on the semantic level, it manifests itself in different place than where you actually made the error. And think back to how the music XML file is structured. The clef is somewhere in the tree, and all those affected nodes are somewhere else. And perhaps they're split into different voices, so that you really have to go all the, nearly all the way up the music XML tree in order to find all of those affected nodes. So you can see how it's not trivial to, to make a script for that. Uh, 
this interaction between the semantic and graphical level is not straightforward. You, it's not local. Uh, it might not even be contiguous. So, if you mistake in the beginning of a staff the key signature for an accidental which just belongs to the next note, then according to the rules of reading music, for this note, you will apply the accidental, and the C will be interpreted as a C-sharp, which is correct. But in the next measure, these accidentals stop being valid. If they're just attached to one note, if they're not a part of the key signature, in the next measure, all those notes that could be a C will be interpreted as a C. So you will start getting the errors only later down the road. So this interaction is one gnarly problem which we haven't solved yet and frankly we don't really have a good idea of how to do this. So if you want to publish an OMR paper next Izmir, you know, this is your very good chance and we will love you. For extrinsic evaluation, so measuring how useful our system is in the context of a target application, we can very often reuse existing methodology. So if your task is some kind of retrieval, there is a wide spectrum of retrieval metrics that you can use. Uh, for replaying, so for this automated playback of music score images, you can use, for instance, uh, metrics for multi-F0 detection, for, for like, transcribing audio. You have to be careful about which ones you select, but this is eminently possible. The one situation where this recycling isn't really applicable is when you do this full score transcription. So when your end product is the actual score and you want to give it to a musician, we have no way of evaluating how good this is. Again, if you can come up with something, we will love you. Uh, on this, actually, there has been some work in getting automated metrics. I mean, the obvious way to evaluate this is to just, you know, tell five different people to transcribe the score. The, the recognition of code five other people will be transcribing from scratch. You will just measure how long it takes, average, and voila, you will have an evaluation. This is a little expensive. Uh, so, we would really like an automated metric. There is one attempt by Mariusz Schloch from 2008. He went through the pain of creating a user study on this, so he designed a music XML distance metric and had people uh, correct some scores and measure some correlations. Unfortunately, the paper is not very detailed in this respect. And the only thing I got from him was an exe file and not the source. So I don't know how this method really works. I did some other stuff two years back where I collected user judgments on what kind of error they would like to see more. So what would, they, what would take them less time to correct? And you have these pairwise judgments and when you design a music XML distance metric, you can measure how well it conforms to the user's priorities. This, if you want to play around with this, this is available on GitHub. I tried some obvious things, like for instance this tree at a distance in music XML, and it doesn't really work very well. It was actually tentatively agreed upon. Uh, on Thursday, when we had a workshop, that uh, there should be a contest on designing evaluation metrics, because this is the bottleneck to organizing an actual OMR contest. We don't know how to evaluate. 